Um, last question here uh, from Sand Inc. Do you guys think Troy will pick up Amani Bates with that second round pick? He shot the lights out of the combine, but his defense was as good as Bogdanovich. Amani Bates thoughts. What do we got? Uh, I don't I see a reason to draft him. I, I think he's not proven he's like like the only reason that we think he's good is because of his name and his pedigree. But like even in the Mac at a bad team and a bad team in the Mac that didn't even make their conference tournament, like he didn't elevate that team. Like you would think if a like if an NBA player, former like top almost like, you know, better than Victor at one point, you know, years ago, level of prospect came in there and played on Eastern Michigan that he would lift them at least to the Mac conference tournament, but they they didn't make that. And, you know, he had some fun moments. Like I remember watching him against Michigan and it was a lot of fun and he was very like electric, but like, do we really need to go? I don't know. What's the, what's the why, what, what market is there for tall guys with short arms who like to shoot, like who like to just shoot the ball and just take it off the dribble every single time. Cause I don't know what else the money Bates even brings outside of like, he loves to shoot the ball. Yeah, that's it. That, that's all he brings. And we, you know, so the question we bring up the the combine, right? He shot the lights out of the combine. Mm-hmm. That's great. But there's this account, uh, Cali Draft. So I don't know if you guys have seen this, but Amani Bates had the worst, the worst by far. He was in single digits, the only prospect in I think the last ten years, uh, to get a single digit combine score, athletic score from from this guy. I think he was at like seven, and the next highest might have been ten or, or twelve points higher. So. He's not only is he not athletic, he's got alligator arms, and he still thinks he's Carmelo. Like, I'll pass, maybe on a two-way. But even then, I, I think he needs to get out of Michigan, too, just from, like, his story. I, I think he just needs to, to go somewhere else. That'd be good for him. Um, I I would very much like to pass on, on Imani Bates. I don't see it happening. Not at 31, too. Like, maybe if you're at, like, in the 50s. I'd sign him to a two way two way contract. That's how I view him. And like, yeah, like I don't view him any higher than that. Like he's a two way guy who maybe he turns into something. Maybe you get rid of him halfway through the season. You know? Yeah, I, I don't have much else to add apart from he seems like a guy who takes a lot of tough shots and doesn't make a lot of them. <laughs> like I don't, I don't have much more to add. I mean, I just look at it and I'm like, I just from being in like the Detroit area this year. And like Amani Bates is at Eastern, which isn't too far from, you know, Detroit's been, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And then you look at in Detroit, there was Antoine Davis, who is not an NBA prospect either, but like just two dudes, one who's like physically gifted and has all the tools and played on the bad team. And you've got Davis who also did not play for a good team, but again, like didn't have all the physical gifts, everything like that. He's a freaking baller. And he's is, obviously way older, but like still the, the comparison. Guy, sorry to jump in. Is he the guy who let like his all time score? He came up like four scoring. point. He came up like three or four points short. And uh, oh. the the postseason tournament that Detroit tried to buy into, pay like twenty grand to go play, and so we could break the record. Was like we don't really want you to come. So he didn't get to. He didn't get to break the record. But um, it's just that's just like juxtaposing two guys who one who's definitely not an NBA player and one who we're talking about with the thirty first overall pick for you know the Pistons, which I don't know. I mean, physically I see it, you know, I know the name, I know the pedigree, but you know, put yeah. it on tape. He hasn't been good. So like, what's I mean, the point? You know, we don't draft bad players, do we? Hopefully not. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got into it last week with Damon or Ed from Detroit bad boys. Just there's, there's so many more other options at pick 31, yeah. but that's a really valuable pick still. Like mm-hmm. I think even Wes brought it up last week. Like that's a pick Detroit might use to, package with a, some sort of player to get back into the first round. Like there's some value there with that pick. And I think you could use it a lot more wisely than taking a flyer on a, a high school phenom from three years ago. Well, um, even on top of that, you're right. Like, I think I've seen it both in, I think James wrote it in the athletic and then Omar wrote it in the free press today. They were talking about targets at 31 and both of them mentioned uh, Jaime Jaquez from UCLA, who was like, not the same player by any means, you know, different story for your player, but like that dude, I don't know what he's going to be in the NBA, but he is a good basketball player. And I think smart teams make good basketball players work. Like 
if you're smart and you know how to, you know, work this guy into whatever you want, he will be on your team for the next, you know, eight, 10 years. I think that's kind of, that would be a nice way to spend that pick is if they were to get a guy who, like I said, a second round pick, who's not going to blow your socks off, but is going to contribute and be a contributor when you're good or when you're bad. You know, that's the thing too, is like, if he fills a role, he'll fill a role when you're good too. Right. Like he's scalable. So that's a guy I like there just because he's just a bucket. Like he's just a very good basketball player.